بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد إن شاء الله to continue along with the sickness and the cure by Ibn Qayyim رحمه الله Last week we discussed how the sins can be all uh, broken down to two categories فعل المحذور أو ترك المأمور Doing that which is forbidden or leaving that which is commanded So Ibn Qayyim said that all sins can be divided into those two categories And then he further said that you can divide the sins into either um, those that are connected to the outward bodily actions or the inward heart, actions of the heart. And it can be further classified into those that are related to the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or those that are related to the rights of the creation. And then he went and just said that the sins can be described in general to four main categories. Al-Malakiyya, wa Sabi'iyya, wa Shaytaniyya, wa Al-Bahimiyya. So those sins that can be classified as those of like the characteristics of the kings, you know, like having arrogance or kibriya, and those that can be classified in, in terms or described, characterized as the sins of the predators, the predatory animals, like killing, you know, those type of sins, or those that can be the, the classified as the shaytaniya, you know, having jealousy or hatred in the heart, and those that can be classified as the animalistic characteristics, which is the ones that are following the shahawat, the lower desires. Now he's going to go, inshallah, today to describe each one of those. فَالذُّنُوبُ الْمَلَكِيَّةِ أَنْ يَتَعَاطَى مَا لَا يَسَحُ لَهُ مِنْ صِفَاتِ الرُّبُوبِيَةِ كَالْعَظَمَةِ وَالْكِبْرِيَاءِ وَالْجَبْرُوتِ وَالْقَهْرِ وَالْعُلُوْ وَاسْتِبْعَادِ الْخَلْقِ وَاسْتِبْعَادِ الْخَلْقِ وَاسْتِبْعَادِ الْخَلْقِ وَنَحْوِ ذَلِكَ so the sins of the, like the king-like sins basically can be classified as those that you're not allowed to have because it is the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Lordship alone. Like nobody has the right to challenge Allah and His Lordship. Nobody has the right to claim that He has powers similar to those of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like for example, having uh, kibr. Al-kibriya lillah, right? You are a human being created from a sperm, right? And you're made from flesh and blood, and you eat, you need to eat, and you need to sleep, and you need to do the things that entail after you eat, and, you know? So these, how can one have those characteristics and claim to have like kibr or pridefulness or looking down upon others, right? Kibriya is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al-adhama, you know, Allah says, to compare yourself to the mountains. You know, are you as big as the mountains? No. You know, go and stand next to a mountain and look how small you feel, how small you look. Right? We have no right to, to have this huge amount of pride and look down upon others and think ourselves so great and so high. These are characteristics for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, Sabbih isma rabbik al a'la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the most high. Sorry, I think this is too louder. <laughs> And he is the one who has the right because he is the master of the universe who created everything. He has the right to be worshipped. He has the right to say, you know, worship him because he deserves it. And he has the right to say how great he is because he is the greatest. Right? Us as creation, we can never equal the creator. You know, so we have to have some humbleness. ويدخل في هذا الشرك بالله تعالى وهو نوعان شرك في أسماءه وصفاته وجعل آلية أخرى معه وشرك في معاملاته وهذا الثاني قد لا يجب دخول النار وإن أحبط العمل الذي أشرك فيه مع الله غيره. So he's saying that shirk also enters into this category of the sins of the like having kingdomship for example or um, malakut like saying that you are something greater than you are supposed to claim. So committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes under this category as well. If you ascribe to Allah names that are not befitting of Him, if you worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're following under this category. 
And he's saying there's two types of shirk. The shirk that takes you outside the folds of Islam. If you die upon it, the person will enter into hellfire forever. And then there's shirk azghar, which a person he can fall into, um, he might lose his deeds that he did that shirk in, but it's not the shirk that keeps him out of the uh, paradise. Like he can still go into paradise. Um, some scholars say, no, any type of shirk, if a person dies upon it without making toba, he will be in the hellfire forever. But the correct opinion, Allah, who A'anam, Allah knows best, is the one that if you do the shirk al-akbar and you don't make toba, then that's the one that takes a person to the hellfire. But if you do the shirk azghar, inshallah you'll be of those that Allah forgives. However, when you do that action, it could uh, destroy all your good deeds. Can anybody give me an example of that? Shirk azghar or shirk akbar? So give me one for Shirk Akbar, like what is associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How? Yes, cursing anything from the religion, cursing the Quran, cursing Allah, cursing the Prophet. Swearing by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah. Depends on which level also, Faith, huh? Disbelieving in anything from the authentic, you know, Quran or Mutawat al Hadith. Yeah. If you love something more than Allah, yes, that could lead, that could be a form of shirk, you know, because the Prophet said, "لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ولدي وناس جماعين." This is just the Prophet said, "I said that none of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his father, his son, and all of the people together." That's just the Prophet said, uh, "I and Allah says." Uh, when he talks about the mushrikeen, they, they ascribe love to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than their love for Allah. So this can be a form of shirk that takes a person outside the folds of Islam. Uh, the minor shirk, okay, what is minor shirk? Showing off, doing an action that is supposed to be for the sake of Allah, for the sake of the people, right? And this is where a Muslim should always be very careful because the shaitan always tries to get into this, uh, what do you call like, bab, this door. He opens this door for many people. You know, ikhlas is the most important uh, form of worship to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For your deeds to be accepted, you, we said in the very beginning, you need to have ikhlas and doing the correct action. But if you're missing ikhlas, your deeds are negated, right? A good deed can be turned null because of the ikhlas. We said before that a person can be in the same, two people can be in the same line of salah. And the difference between their salah is like the difference between the mashriqi and the maghrib. The, the east and the west. Right? So one person is so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has khushu', he has ikhlas, his deeds are high up. And the other person, his mind is, you know, not even in the salah or he's doing the salah just to show off for other people. So the distance between the two salats is like the distance between the east and the west. Right? Or a person going to seek knowledge, you know, is it because you're doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to show off in front of other people? Even the janazah, something so simple as a janazah, praying the funeral prayer, you have to purify your intentions. Are you going to pray because it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or are you going to like show off to just say these people I showed up to your janazah, for example? You know? Little things like that, the shaitan can come and try to decrease the person's reward from the good deed or try to make it completely null. You know, the more riya it goes into it, the more uh, vacated it becomes. So a person always tries to renew his niyyah and, and, and keep away from shirk. Once you offer the salah, then it's, you don't have to repeat the fard, but you can make istighfar and ask Allah for forgiveness and, and make tawbah and, and try to like ask Allah to accept it. Allah knows best. وهذا القسم أعظم أنواع الذنوب ويدخل فيه القول على الله بلا علم في خلقه وأمره فمن كان من أهل هذه الذنوب فقد نازع الله سبحانه في ربوبيته وملكه وجعله ندا وهذا أعظم الذنوب عند الله ولا يرفع معه عمل. So he's saying basically this is the greatest form of sin, the shirk with Allah سبحانه وتعالى, um, associating partners with Allah. It nullifies your good deeds. Uh, in terms of the hadith, the Prophet also وسلم, he said, لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال ذرة من الكبر. A person will never enter into paradise if he has an 
ounce weight of kibber, of pridefulness, right? So, kibber, the opposite of what we're supposed to have, humbleness for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can lead a person to not enter into paradise. We can answer in the meantime. So if a, person, a Muslim has kibr in his heart, will he enter into paradise? Eventually? In the end? So how do you put the two hadith together? Or how do you put the hadith with the statement that... that hmm. But he said if he will not enter into paradise if he has even an Adam's weight of kibr in his heart. Yes. Also... A simple explanation I heard from one of my teachers is that one of my students and one of my teachers, mashallah, is that you won't have kibber in your heart when you enter the paradise. As a Muslim, you won't have kibber in your heart while you enter the paradise. So there won't be mithqala left. Either, like the sister said, there would be enough punishment to obviously humble you enough to understand you don't deserve to have kibber in your heart, or the person would have enough toba to repent that will re erase his kibber, you know. So this is how we put those two together. And Allah says in the Quran, لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلَكَ If you sh commit shirk, your, your deeds will be like negated. So the most important part of all the Prophet ﷺ's job is to call people to tawheed, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you really understand that, you see the evilness of shirk and kufr. Right? Think of all the gifts that Allah has given you and your family. You know, even your own creation, your life, and then you go and thank somebody else, or you don't even thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, so it's, the Imam is saying, it's the greatest form of sinfulness, to associate partners to Allah, to negate uh, His attributes, to disbelieve in Him, to turn away from Him, right? As Muslims, we are the opposite. We turn to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get close to Him. The second category he describes وَأَمَّا الذُّنُوبُ الشَّيْطَانِيَّةِ فَالتَّشْبِيهَ بِالشَّيْطَانِ فِي الْحَسَدِ وَالْبَغِي وَالْغِشِّ وَالْغِلِّ وَالْخِدَعِ وَالْمَكْرِ وَالْأَمْرِ بِالْمَعَاصِ وَالنَّهِي عَنْ طَاعَةِ وَالْإِبْتِدَعَ فِي الدِّينِ وَالدَّعْوَةُ إِلَى بِدْعَةِ وَالضَّلَالِ So the, the sinfulness, the satanic sinfulness is described as having jealousy or hatred in the heart, um, cheating, Deceiving, plotting against others, encouraging sinfulness, encouraging uh, deviations, and uh, forbidding others from doing good works. These are the jobs of the shaitan, and this is the job, uh, this is the sins. If people do these type of acts, they're having comparison to the shayateen, right? And this is less than the first category, he says, of shirk, but it's very close to it. And its uh, evilness is uh, very dangerous because the sins of the heart are some of, you know, that's where the shirk occurs also, for example. But those other sins that come from the heart are very dangerous too. You know, having hatred for your fellow Muslims, looking down upon others, having jealousy, you know. If you truly believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He is a razaq, He is the one who provides, He is the one who gives, you know, then why should you have jealousy for somebody else? Why should you wish decline from somebody else? Say, MashaAllah, Barakallahu fee. May Allah bless you and increase you. Rizqullahi wasi'a. Allah's provision is so wide, so great. You don't need to have jealousy. Be content for what you have. You know, all those sicknesses from the heart come from a person not understanding tawheed and not being content with Allah's decree and Allah's provision. Right? And those sins, they lead to more and more sicknesses of the heart and sicknesses of the body. You know, all these heart attacks, all these depression cases, all these suicides. It, comes, it stems from these type of sicknesses of the heart. وَأَمَّا ذُنُوبَ السَّبِعِيَّةَ فَذُنُوبَ الْعَدْوَانِ وَالْغَضَبُ وَالسَّفْكُ الدِّمَاءِ وَالتَّثَاوَبَ عَلَى الضُعَفَاءِ وَالْعَاجِزِينَ وَيَتَوَلَّدَ مِنْهَا أَنْوَاءَ أَذَا نَوَى الْإِنسَانِ وَالْجَرْءَ عَلَى الظُّلْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ So this type of sin, the sin of the predator, like the beasts, you know, like the lions and the dogs and the hunting animals, the animals that prey upon the weak. This is, the, he's called, describing the other characteristics of sins for this. It contains having enmity for one another, having anger, spilling the blood like murder, oppressing the weak, taking advantage of those who are underneath you, and um, 
having zulm and udwan, like injustice, right? The stronger, like if you see the animal kingdom, like how the stronger animal can get away with, you know, beating this, the, the weaker animal, taking advantage of it. So in human terms, it's like when a person has a power or a strength or some type of um, levels upon other people and he uses that to his advantage to take it to, to oppress them or to kill them or to steal from them unjustly, right? This is the type of sinfulness that's described as predatory sinfulness. And the fourth category is الذنوب البهيمية فمثل شره والحرص على قضاء شهوة البطن والفرج So this one, it is related to the lower desires of the private parts and the stomach, right? Like eating, taking amwal bilbatil, stealing property from somebody or cheating somebody in your business transactions, right? Or eating usury. And then also the uh, shahawat of terms of having illicit sexual relations, zina and uh, these other type of things. Also he says al-bukhul was shah like having stinginess, you know, not being generous. This is, a, this is from the characteristic of the, the lower animals, you know, these type of uh, animals that all they care about is fulfilling their lower desires and getting as much as they can, as much food as they can, as much sexual intercourse as they can, whatever the means. So these are the characteristics when people take this, uh, follow these examples, they're taking on these characteristics. And then he goes and he says, وَمَنْ تَأَمَّلَ هَذَا حَقُّ تَأَمَّلِي تَبَيِّنَ أَنَّهُ أَنَّ الذَّنُوبَ دَهْلُزْ لِلشَّرْكِ وَالْكُفْرِ وَمَنَازَ اللَّهِ فِي رُبُوبِيَتِهِ If a person truly ponders upon all sinfulness in, in general, they lead to committing shirk with Allah and kufr, right? And, and, and basically going against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's kingdomship or lordship. The more a, a person, he indulges in sinfulness, the less respect he has for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And less respect he has for the commands of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah. And the, the easier it is for him to fall into shirk and kufr. Then the imam, he goes into explaining um, the categories of kabair and sagair, right? So we all know there's major sins and there's minor sins. This is the jamhur of the ulama. The majority of the Muslim scholars classify sins into major and minor. There are some groups that don't, but we'll get into that inshallah. But in general, the majority of scholars say that all sins can be classified as to kabair wa sagair, major and minor. الذنوب كبائر والصغائر وقد دل القرآن والسنة وإجماع الصحابة رضي الله عنهم والتابعين من بعدهم ولأمة جلاء على أن الذنوب كبائر والصغائر قال الله تعالى إن تجتنبوا كبائر ما تنهون عنه نكفر عنكم سيئاتكم وندخلكم مدخلا كريما that the consensus of the Sahaba the companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and the tabi'een those that followed them and the honorable imams all of them say that their the sins can be classified into kabair and sagair the major sins and the minor sins and they use the ayah to prove that in surah nisa ayah 31 if you leave the kabair the major sins that you are forbidden from allah will uh, cover your faults and enter you into a honorable uh, entrance paradise jannah so there's a distinction between kabair and then the other, other sins in this ayah. Also Allah says, الَّذِينَ اجْتَنِبُونَ كَبَائِرَ الْإِثْمِ وَالْفَوَاحِشَ إِلَّا الْنَمَمِ Those who stay away from the major sins and lewdness, except lamam, like the small sins. So here Allah is also distinguishing between الْكَبَائِرَ وَالصَّغَائِرَ وَفِي الصَّحِيحِ عَنَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَنَّهُ قَالْ الصَّلَوَاتُ الْخَمْسَ وَالْجُمْعَةُ إِلَى الْجُمْعَةِ وَالْرَمَضَانُ إِلَى رَمَضَانِ مكفرات لما بينهن إذا إذا اجتنبت الكبائر that the the five prayers right if you do them and the Juma into the next Juma the Friday prayer to the next Friday prayer and the Ramadan to the Ramadan if you do these sincerely they are a wiping away of the sins as long as you stay away from the kabair right so in this hadith Imam is showing also the Prophet ﷺ distinguishes between kabair and sagair right. So, the strongest opinion for any major sin, the sister, huh? The sister is asking if, how do you come back from the major sins? So, if, like he's saying, these cover up the small sins. So, what about the major sins? 
the majority of scholars say that for the major sins you re require is toba, a sincere toba, to cover it, right? So they say that these do not uh, suffice for the major sins. So you have to make toba. Yeah. So what's the shirut of toba? What's the requirements of toba? Yeah. <laughs> so he said one of the requirements is not to go back to the sin. So we said before toba is to stop the sin first and foremost. Um, have regret for what you've done have the intention not to do it again and if it uh, involves the right of another person you return that right the best way you can as long as it won't call it, cause a greater, greater evil and these types of mukaffirat like the prayers, the Ramadan, the Juma, they have three types of levels the Imam is saying إِحْدَاهَا أَن تَقْصِرُ عَن تَكْفِيرِ الصَّغَائِرِ لِضَعْفِهَا وَضَعْفِ الْإِخْلَاصِ فِيهَا وَالْقِيَامُ بِحُقُوقِهَا بِمَنْزَةِ الدَّوَاءِ الضَّعِيفَ الَّذِي يَنْقُصُ عَن مُقَاوَمَةِ الدَّاءِ كَمِيَةٍ وَكَيْفِيَةٍ So he's saying that the first level, the kafara, like doing these extra salat, extra siyam, you know, these nawafil, sadaqa, for example, it's, it's not enough to cover the sins. He's saying, in that sense, because the ikhlas was not great enough in these actions. And he compares it to the medicine for a sick person that doesn't have an effect upon the person. Like it might help him a little bit, but it's not enough to cure him, right? Either he needs a stronger dose or a different medicine. So he's saying, this is the first category, the people that, you know, the mukaffarat is not sufficient for them. The second category, and تقاوم الصغائر ولا ترتقي إلى تكفيري شيء من الكبائر um, So these mukaffarat will cover the small sins but they're not enough to cover the big sins. And then he says the third category أن تقوى على تكفيري صغائري وتبقى فيها قوة تكفيري بها بعد الكبائر And he's saying that it covers the sins, the small sins and it has enough for it to cover even some of the big sins. Right? So there's some ahadith the Prophet would say if you do such and such um, it would be like your newborn child or if you do such you say such and such Allah will forgive your sins even if they were like the, the as much as the earth right so the, some scholars say if you truly say that with ikhlas and iman and yaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even wipe away some of the kabair right that's how merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and there's many uh, a hadith we've talked about and you I'm sure have read the toba of the, the, the person was so sincere, it lifted him up to high levels, right? Like we said last time about the woman who committed zina and she went to get purified, how sincere her toba was. That even if it was spread upon the, all of Medina and some narrations, the whole earth, they would have covered for them, right? Or that poor man, remember he said, like, when I die to his family, burn me and scatter my ashes in the sea because if Allah is uh, able to take me over, he will surely punish me, right? He had such fear in his heart and regret for the sins that he did. Even though he's committing shirk in this, this qawl because he's doubting or he's saying a statement of shirk saying that Allah doesn't have an ability to gather him up again. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like laughs, smiles at his statement, laughs at his statement out of pleasure and he forgives this person. Right? So certain acts a person can do it so sincerely that would even cover the kabair. فَتَأَمَّلْ هَذَا فَإِنَّهُ يُزِيلُ عَنْكَ إِشْكَالَاتِ كَثِيرًا so uh, ponder upon that. So these three points it will remove from you many doubts. You know, basically, um, having that ikhlas and sincerity in your repentance and your tawbah and doing your actions can be a way to, you know, negate your sins. And always, like the Prophet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Hadith Qudsi, that لا يزال عبد يتقرب إليه من بنوافل حتى أحبه, right? that a, person, a servant continues to do good deeds until Allah loves him. Right? So you always try, like, and from the greatest of sins, I think he will talk about it maybe, or he might point to it, is having, um, losing hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لا تقنطوا من روح الله Don't ever give up upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Right? Because that's like up there with shirk. You know? That's what the shaitan wants the person to do, to give up. But always have sincere heart, um, sincerity in your heart to do the deeds for Allah's sake and inshallah He will cover your sins. وفي صحيحين عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال اشتنبوا سبع الموبقات 
قيل وما هن يا رسول الله قال الإشراق بالله والسحر وقتل النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق وأكل مال اليتيم وأكل الربا وتولي يوم الزحف وقذف المحصنات الغافلات المؤمنات So the Prophet وسلم, he said to stay away from the seven major sins the Imam is using this as another deal that there's kabair and sagair big sins and you know major sins and small sins he said and they said what is the major what are they O Messenger of Allah what are these major sins he said al ishraqu billah first and foremost the greatest of all sins is committing shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min ashraka bi fi amari taraktuhu wa shirk like the meaning roughly the hadith of a person who, if he commits shirk with me I leave him and that way he's committing shirk with like if you're doing something for the pleasure of the people for other than Allah then Allah doesn't need it he leaves it for that people and then the second one he says sihr black magic basically doing magic is, this, is, is one of the kabair and you know the many of the scholars say that it's a death penalty issue because it usually encompasses shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the person to do true sihr, he has to commit some type of shirk or kufr or disrespect of the Qur'an or killing an innocent person or blood sacrifices to the jinn or something like that so they can do the magic for him. Is there tawbah? There's tawbah from any sin as long as you do it before you die. Yeah. But there are some narrations that like are very scary about doing you know black magic and, and certain types of uh, major sins that make one feel like it's like very hard for a person to come back from that. وَقَتْلَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ Killing the innocent souls. That's one of the greatest of sins. وَأَكْلَ الْمَالَ الْيَتِيمِ Eating the wealth of the orphan. Right? And this occurs if you do it improperly, obviously, because if you're taking care of the orphan in the Sharia, it's permissible to take some of the wealth in, in compensation for your um, taking care of that orphan. But you should never go more than that. And if you don't need it, you shouldn't take from it. You know, this is a amana, a trust for you. This person, this poor kid, lost his parents. He has no one else, you know. In the past, people would take advantage of poor orphans. And that's one of the, uh, Prophet Sallallahu said, one of the greatest of sins, you know. This is a helpless child that you're doing a favor for, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So never try to steal or deceive or take advantage of those that are, are in a weak position. وَأَكْتَ riba, Eating usury, interest, right? And subhanAllah, like the Prophet ﷺ said, there will come a time that the dust of riba, nobody will be free from the dust of riba, you know? And nowadays, like, almost anyone here, I believe, has a bank account at least. And what do those banks make their money from? What do their banks do with your money? You know, so the dust of riba are always, even if you try your best to avoid the actual riba transactions, the dust of it is like touching us, unfortunately. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's like, for example, having a bank account, it's, it's almost a necessity nowadays, you know, so it's, inshallah, it's not your intention to indulge in riba. It's just part of the, you know, way that we're living in. Like, many, like, subhanAllah, when you see the, if you look about the signs, the minor signs and the major signs, of the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the Prophet Sallallahu who was Sadiq Al-Masduq, the, the most truthful of ones, it's in front of our eyes, you know, SubhanAllah, like, yeah. With Tawalli Yawm Al-Zahf, that's like turning your back on the battlefield. That's also from the Kabair. You know, there's a difference between strategy and, and uh, turning your back. Like if you turn your back, meaning that you fear that more than you fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and you're kind of doing treachery to the the ranks of the believers, right? So it's the, one of the greatest of sins. And it's not just in Islam, it's in <laughs> most uh, countries or, or armies and military codes, they have, you know, it, they consider it a form of treason, you know. Like recently that bird dog, you know, Birdo or I forget his name exactly, but in Afghanistan he left the ranks and he was charged, you know, with, these t- with leaving the, yeah, <laughs> treason or leaving the, ra- the, uh, the ranks or such. So, it's a despicable characteristic that, you know, a Muslim, a true Muslim, he should never have, even in, you know, if not in the like, official battlefield, but also standing up for what's right sometimes, you know, I think you can interpret it to always be firm and, and, and not like sell your soul for a cheap price. Like you have your principles that you're not going to sacrifice, right? 
So always try to stand firm. A Muslim in general stands firm. وَقَذَفِ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ الْغَافِلَاتِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ um, labeling or calling uh, anybody in general if you, if you accuse them of sexual intercourse like illegal sexual intercourse without proofs or for witnesses that's a form of qadhaf and you get penalized lashes for it right? even if you saw it yourself 100% and the, the sharut is I'm going to be explicit is to actually see the entering of the male organ into the female organ it's, it's, it's something like very explicit so even if you see that explicitly by yourself and you don't have three witnesses and you go and say I saw such and such you get punished for qadhaf and, and the worst form of qadhaf is to accuse the innocent girls you know to call a girl like improper name and, and she's totally innocent and oblivious to what you're saying she's never done such a thing you know that's one of the seven uh, major sins the Prophet Sallallahu is talking in this hadith وفي صحيحين عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه سئل أي ذنب أكبر عند الله قال أن تدعو لله ندا وهو خلقك قيل ثم أي قال أن تقتل الولدك مخافة أن يطعم معك قيل ثم أي قال أن تزاني بحليلة جارك فأنزل الله تعالى تصديقا لقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم والذين لا يدعون مع الله إله آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق so the Prophet وسلم, he said that um, he was asked what is the greatest of sins and he said to associate a partner with Allah and he's the one who created you right so shirk basically then the Sahaba asked him what about after that what's greater than the greatest sin he said to kill your child fearing poverty and then he said what about what about uh, the greatest sin after that he said and to commit adultery with your neighbor's wife and we explained this hadith in a previous uh, lesson, alhamdulillah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the ayat, basically affirming what the Prophet sallallahu said, those who do not call upon other than Allah, and they don't kill the innocent souls, and uh, that Allah has made forbidden, prohibited from killing, and they do not commit adultery or fornication, these are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, repentance for and enters them into paradise. Adid al-kaba'ir, the number of kaba'ir, how many kaba'ir are there? So anybody know? How many major? Your book says four? That is one of the sayings. Some say four. It's gonna, some say seven. Some say ten. Some say seventy. So there's, Imam al-Dahibi has a whole book called kaba'ir. I think there's over a hundred. Yeah. So, We'll go now and see the difference of the opinion. So, اختلف الناس في الكبائر هل لها عدد يحصرها على قولين. So the ulama or the people have differed in the opinion of what is the major sins upon two sayings. ثم الذين قالوا بحصرها اختلفوا في عددها. So there's some people that say there's no limit to it and there's some say there's a specific number for it. And those who say that there's a specific number for the major sins, they've um, differed in that. فقال عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه هي أربعة وقال عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه هي السبعة وقال عبد الله بن عامر بن العاص هي تسعة وقال غيره هي إحدى عشرة وقال آخر هي سبعين So عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه he said there are four and عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنه he said there are seven and عبد الله بن عامر بن العاص he said there is nine and uh, others said there is eleven and others said there is seventy right and then he mentioned the statement actually we mentioned last week by Abu Talib in Makki. He said, Jama'tuha min aqwali sahabati fawajatuha arba'ata fil qalb wa hiya ashirku billahi wal israru al ma'asiyya wal qunut min rahmatillahi wal amnu min makrillah. He'll get into it. It goes back to um, different ahadith and different definitions of what kabair are. So, a lot of scholars, we're going to get into it, but they say, for example, anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised a punishment for will be considered a kabira. You know, anything that's promised the hellfire or curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's considered from the kabair. So they're all correct, yeah, in a sense. And some, like, maybe they don't mean it as, like, this is the only four major sins, but they mean these are the major four sins. So, like, in this case, I think uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, uh, it's the shirk billah, wa amnu, wa ya'isu min rawhillah. So he says that the, having committing adultery with 
committing idolatry, you know, associating partners to Allah, worship other than Allah, uh, giving up on Allah's mercy, feeling safe from Allah's makr, and killing the innocent soul. So according to the sun cause, those are the four greatest sins anybody can do. And the three relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the other to the um, rights of the creation. The worst things you can do is, you know, shirk in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, rights. And the worst thing you can do to the other creation is to kill it, take its own life. It's worse than stealing, it's worse than zina and other things because once you take a life, you can never get that life back, right? So that's why he's, I think in his interpretation, or the ones that say that it's four major ones, they, they classify it as those that I just mentioned. Um, so Abu Talib al Mecca, he says, he uh, looked at the statements of the Sahaba and he found there are four in the heart, you know, shirk with Allah, continuing upon evilness, giving up on the hope of rah- the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and feeling safe from the Mecca of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, for upon the tongue, that is the false witness uh, accusing the chaste woman, the false uh, vows and magic, and three in the stomach, sharb al khamar wa akli mal yatim wa akli riba, drinking wine, eating the property of the orphan, and eating uh, riba usury. And two upon the private parts, wa huma al zina wal liwath, like adultery, fornication, and uh, homosexual acts or sodomy. وَإِثْنَانِ فِي الْيَدَيْنِ وَهُمَا الْقَتْلُ وَالسِّرْقَةِ And two upon the hands, and that is stealing and killing. وَوَاحِدٌ فِي الرِّجْلَيْنِ وَهُوَ الْفِرَارُ مِنَ الزَّحْفِ One upon the feet, and that's like running away on the day of the battle, from the battle. And then the other one, he says, relates to the whole body, and we talked about this last week, which is being disobedient to the parents, or being mean to the parents, or disrespectful to the parents. وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يُحْصُرُهَا بِعَدَدٍ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَالَ كُلُّ مَا نَهَى اللَّهُ عَنْهُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ فَهُوَ كَبِيرًا وَمَا نَهَى عَنْهُ الرَّسُولُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ فَهُوَ صَغِيرًا So some scholars that say there's no limit to the kabair says that anything that Allah has forbidden in the Qur'an is considered from the kabair and anything that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is forbidden in the sunnah is considered from the sagair, the small deeds. وَقِيلَ مَا تَرَتَّبْ عَلَيْهِ حَدٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا أَوْ وَعِيدٌ فِي الْآخِرَةِ فَهُوَ كَبِيرًا وَمَا لَمْ يَرَتَّبْ عَلَيْهِ لَا هَذَا وَلَا ذَاكَ فَهُوَ صَغِيرًا And that which is, entails a had punishment in this dunya or a punishment of the fire or other punishment in the akhirah, punishment in the grave, those are considered kabair, major sins. And those that do not have this definition are considered sagair. So anything that doesn't have like the punishment of had in this dunya or the promise of punishment in the akhirah is considered sagira. Is that clear? Well, he's saying if, if it came in the Quran, this is another saying, another scholar's opinion is that if it comes in the Quran and Sunnah promising a punishment of had, you know, in terms of uh, death penalty or whip lashes or, you know, those are the major had anyways, or cutting the hand for, for sirqa, or a punishment in the akhir like the hellfire or punishment in the grave. So if a clear text comes with these type of descriptions of punishments, it's considered kabira to these scholars. And then anything that doesn't have these type of uh, promises or descriptions of punishment, then these considered sagira. Okay. So, وَقِيلَ كُلُّ مَا اتَّفَقَتْ الشَّرَاعَ عَلَى تَحْرِيمِهِ فَهُوَ مِنَ الْكَبَائِرِ وَمَا كَانَ تَحْرِيمُ فِي الشَّرِيعَةِ دُونَ الشَّرِيعَةِ فَهُوَ صَغِيرَ So anything that uh, all of the sharia, the different laws, the Islamic law and other laws agree upon to be haram, then that's from the kabair. And those things that are not agreed upon between all the sharias, the different legislative systems, like the Torah, the Injil, the other people of the book, if not everybody's agreement, then it's considered from the sagira. And also it's saying, كُلُّ مَا لَعْنَهُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ فَاعِلَهُ فَهُوَ كَبِيرًا Anyone that Allah has cursed or the Prophet has cursed, it's consi- for doing that certain act, it's considered from the kabair. And كل ما, the other saying is, كل ما ذكر من أول سورة النساء إلى قوله تعالى إن تشنموا كبائر ما تنهون عنه نكفر عنكم سيئاتكم. So all the ayats that were mentioned in Surah Nisa up to that point, up to ayah 31, talking about what's haram, those are the only kabair according to some scholars. You guys want to continue or is good pausing point or continue a little bit? Okay. So, الذين لم يقسموها إلى كبائر وصغير. And there's 
another group that they do not um, classify it. They don't distinguish between kabair and sagira. وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ لَمْ يَقْسِمُوهَا إِلَى كِبَارِ وَصَغَارِ قَالُوا الذُّنُوبُ كُلُّهَا بِنِسْبَةِ إِلَى الْجَرَاءَةِ الْجَرَاءَةِ عَلَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَعْصِيَتِهِ وَمُخَالَفَتِهِ أَمْرِهِ كَبَائِرٌ فَنَظَرُوا إِلَى مَنْ عَصَى أَمْرَهُ وَانْتَهَكَ مُحَارِمُهُ وَيُجِبُ أَنْ تَكُونَ الذُّنُوبُ كُلُّهَا كَبَائِرٌ وَهِيَ مُسْتَوِيَةٌ فِي هَذِهِ الْمَفْسَدَةِ So to summarize this statement basically saying that one should look at the one they are sinning against. You're going against the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless if it's what kind of sin it is, you're going against, you're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in that sense, they, and you're going, like you're having the audacity to do it to, you know, in front of Allah. Right? So we're saying in that sense, they're all kaba'a, they're all considered big sins. Because you're not having the respect or the dignity or the shame in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to consider this sin. Um, this is also the, not the stronger opinion. The stronger opinion, like we said, is the ones that distinguish between the kabair and the ithn, uh, the uh, sagair, because of the many ayat and hadith we mentioned. But he's just going to say the why the other people say that there's no such uh, distinguish. قَالُوا وَيُدْحُوا هَذَا أَنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ لَا يَضُرُّهُ أو لَا تَضُرُّهُ ذُنُوبُ وَلَا تَأْثِرْ بِهَا فَلَا يَكُونُ بَعْضُهَا بِنِسْبَةِ إِلَيْهِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ بَعْضٍ فَلَمْ يَبْقَى إِلَّا مُجَرَّدْ مَعْصِيَتِهِ وَمَخَالَفَتِهِ وَلَا فَرْقَ فِي ذَلِكَ بَيْنَ الذَّنْبِ وَالذَّنْبِ So he's saying, and also it's clear because Allah, like sins don't bother him, they don't disturb him. Right? So there's no difference between a big sin and a, and a, and a they're saying a major sin and a small sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know, he doesn't benefit or get harmed by any sinfulness. So in that sense he's saying all sins are pretty much equal in the sight of Allah. They are going against his command and uh, it's a sin. And therefore there should not be distinguishing between the kabair and the sagar. قالوا ويدل على هذه أن مسجد الذنوب إنما هي تابعة للجراءة تواثب على الحق الرب تبارك وتعالى This all goes back that basically you're having the audacity to go against the right of your Lord of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلِهَذَا لَوْ شَرِبَ رَجُلٍ خَمْرًا أَوَطِعَ فَرْجًا حَرَامًا وَهُوَ لَا يَعْتَقِدْ تَحْرِيمُهُ لَكَانَ هَذَا أَوْ قَدْ جَمَعَ بَيْنَ الْجَهْرِ وَبَيْنَ الْفَرْسِدَةِ الْتِقَابِ الْحَرَامِ وَلَوْ فَعَلَ ذَلِكَ مَنْ يَعْتَقِدَ تَحْرِيمُهُ لَكَانَ آتِيًا بِإِحْدَى الْمَفْسِدَتَيْنِ وَهُوَ الَّذِي يَسْتَحَقَّ عُقُوبَةً دُونَ الْأُولَى فَدَلَّ عَلَى أَنَّ الْمَفْسِدَةَ الذَّنْبِ تَابِعَةٌ لِلْجَرَاءَةِ وَالتَّثَوَابِ عَلَيْهِ So to summarize this person, this statement as well, basically like, so he's saying if you, for example, drinking wine and adultery, right? There are two sins. If a person was to come and say that this is halal or this is okay, regardless of which sin it is, he, is, he exits Islam. He goes outside the folds of Islam. Right? So he's saying basically this is another proof. The argument, these people are arguing that this is another proof that all sins are the same basically in the sight of Allah. You know, and this is not the correct opinion, but he's just putting it so people know. ويدلوا على هذا أن المعصية تضمن الاستهانة بأمر المطاع والنهي وانتهاك حرمتي وهذا لا فرق فيه بين ذنب وذنب. Also this shows that the معصية, like the sinfulness, is um, looking down upon Allah subhanahu wa taala's order, like you're disrespecting Allah. You know, regardless of what sin you're doing, you're you're in a sense disrespecting Allah. So he's saying in that case, there's no difference between the types of sins. Both ways you're disrespecting Allah. وقالوا فلا ينظر العبد إلى كبر ذنب وصغره في نفسه ولكن ينظر إلى قدر ما عصاه وعدمته وانتهاك وانتهاك حرمته بالمعاصية. He's saying that the servant should not look at how small the sin is. However, he should look at the greatness of the one he is sinning against, and how that you have gone and violated his prohibitions. وهذا لا يفترق فيه الحار بين معصية ومعصية. And there's no difference between one sin and the other in this in this respect. ولكن في مقته والسقوط من عينه سوى. But in fact, you falling down low or being like looked down upon in the sight of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it's the same regards because you've disrespected His orders and His commands, and you've done what He's prohibited. So you didn't have the respect of Allah in your heart. So like He's saying that whatever the sin is, it's it's, it's the same thing. 
ولهذا كانت معصية من ترك الحج من مكة ومن ترك الجمعة وهو جار جار المسجد أقبح عند الله من معصية من ترك من المكان البعيد والواجب على هذا أكثر من واجب على هذا ولو كان مع رجل مئة درهم ومنع زكاتها ومع آخر مئة ألف 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 فمنع من زكاتها لاستوى في منع ما وجب على كل واحد منهما ولا يبعد استواءهما في العقوبة. So the other argument is saying that if you don't go to Hajj, regardless if you live next to it or if you're far away, the sin is the same, like you're leaving the, the pillar of Islam. Or if you have $200 or $2 million and you don't pay the zakat, the sin is the same. So they're using this as another uh, proof that the sins, regardless of what they are, they're the same in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not the correct opinion. This is just, the Imam is just showing it like both sides of the story and then he'll come and, like he's going very much deep into what sins are. So he's breaking it down to show all the difference of, of opinions. And now he goes, الحق في المسألة وكشف العضاء عن هذه المسألة أنه يقال إن الله عز وجل أرسل رسله وأنزل كتبه وخلق السماوات والأرض ليعرفه ويعبد ويوحد ويكون دين كله لله والطاعة كله له والدعوة له كما قال تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون And the truth in this affair or to cover all of these things is to know that Allah sent his messengers and he sent his books and he created the, seven, the heavens and the earth that you should know there's only one Lord and you should make him one in his worship and that the deen, the religion is for him and him alone. And obedience is to him and him alone and calling is to him and him alone. Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create the jinn or humankind except that they should worship me. وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَمَا خَلَقْنَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ And I did not create the heavens and the earth except in truth. وقال تعالى الله الذي خلق السبع سماوات ومن الأرض مثلهن يتنزل الأمر بينهن لتعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد حاط بكل شيء علما. That Allah created the seven heavens and the earth similar to that. He reveals His orders and He that you may know that um, Allah is over all things powerful and that He is over all things knowledgeable. He knows everything. وقال تعالى جعل الله الكعبة البيت الحرام قياما للناس وشهر الحرام وهدي والقضاء ذلك ليتعلموا أن الله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وأن الله بكل شيء عليم. That Allah subhanahu wa taala He created He made the Kaaba, the Beit of Allah subhanahu wa taala for the people and the month of Haram and the guidance so that people will know Allah knows everything in the heavens and the earth and Allah is all knowledgeable upon everything. فأخبر سبحانه أن القصد بالخلق والأمر أن يعرف بأسمائه وصفاته ويعبد وحده لا شريك به وأن يقوم الناس بالقسط وهو العدل الذي قامت به السماوات والأرض كما قال تعالى لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان يقوم الناس بالقسط. The purpose of creation is basically we sent um, down messengers and ayat so in the book so that we can establish the scale of justice. So all this is basically building up that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you cannot equal, for example, shirk to, you know, telling a white lie, for example, right? All these great ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing what is creating the creation and, and, and sending down messengers and stuff like that, to disbelieve in Allah is not equal to any other sin. So the, sin, the difference between sins. And then he says, Allah sent down mizan, a scale. So there's weighing of deeds, there's weighing of sins, there's weighing of good deeds. So it's distinguishing between one sin and the other, right? The person that kills an innocent soul is not the same as the person that throws trash on the street, you know? The sins are way different. So I think he's building up to this. فَأَخْبَرَ سُبْحَانَهُ أَنَّهُ أَرْسَلَ رُسُلُهُ وَأَنْزَلَ كُتُبُهُ لِيَقُومَ النَّاسَ بِالْقِسْتِ وَهُوَ الْعَدْلِ وَمَنْ أَعْذَ مِنْ الْقِسْتِ التَّوْحِيدِ وَهُوَ رَأْسُ الْعَدْلِ وَقَوَامِهِ وَإِنَّ الشِّرْكَ لَظُلْمٌ عَظِيمٌ فَالشِّرْكُ أَظْلَمُ الظُّلْمِ So he's saying that Allah sent the messengers and he revealed the books so that people can establish justice. And from the greatest of sins and the greatest of injustice is to uh, commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shirk is dhulmun adhim, the greatest of oppression. With tawheed adil adil and the oneness and believing in the oneness of Allah is the most just of justices. فَمَا كَانَ أَشَدُّ مَنَافَةَ لِهَذَا الْمَقْصُودِ فِيهُ أَكْبَرَ الْكَبَائِرِ So the 
the thing that goes against this principle, justice, tawheed, this is from the greatest, the kabir, the, the major of sins. And the level of sinfulness is in accordance to how much you go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tawheed or in justice. وَمَا كَانَ أَشِدَّ مُوَافَقَتْ لِهَذَا الْمَقْصُودِ فَهُوَ أَوْجِبُ الْوَاجِبَاتِ وَأَفْرَدُ الْطَعَى And those things that are like fulfilling these commands are the most beneficial or most obligatory of deeds, right? The opposite. So the Imam is drawing a conclusion that there is distinguishing between the levels of sins and the levels of obedience, right? The one who prays the night and fasts the day and does extra good deeds is not equal to somebody that just does the basics. The one who kills and steals and does oppression and commits shirk is not equal to somebody that does you know, small, small minor deeds that we all fall into on a daily basis sometimes. Right? So the Imam just basically summarized that with these ayat. فَتَأَمَّلَ هَذَا الْأَصْلِ حَقُّ تَأَمُّرِي وَأَتَبَرُوا تَفَاصِيلُهُ تَعْرُفْ بِهِ حِكْمَةُ أَحْكَامِ الْحَاكِمِينَ So ponder upon this and you realize and understand the wisdom of the Most Wise. وَعَنَمَ الْعَانَمِينَ فِيمَا فَرَدَهُ عَلَىٰ عِبَادِهِ وَحَرَّمُهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَتَفَاوَتُ مُرَاتِبِ الطَّعَىٰ وَالْمَعَاصِي And you'll see and you understand the difference between what some things that Allah has made obligatory upon you and some things that He's made haram upon you and, and how you can distinguish between the two. So basically common sense is there's distinguishing between, between sins. There are great sins and there are small sins and they're not equal. And there's great good deeds that you do with ikhlas that you reach levels high, high levels of Iman, and then there's like small basic things that, yeah, you might be considered Muslim, alhamdulillah, but you're not, you know, like Abu Bakr or Umar radiallahu anhumah, right? So just as there's distinguishing between evil deeds, there's distinguishing between the good deeds, and that's just a logical conclusion. And he goes and stretches the point further, but I think for the time's sake, we'll pause here. If there's any questions or comments, Jazakumullah khairan. Tafadurullah. Imam bin Qayyim. Um, I don't, I don't think he made tarjih, but he obviously he prefers a statement that there is a number there, that that the kabair there's a distinction between the major sins and the small sins. Yeah. Yeah. So, like we, the Imam he mentioned the third category that some person might do these good deeds with such sincerity and such um, you know following of the sunnah that it even covers some of the kabair, you know. Like for example, um, you know the hadith bataqa, the hadith of the the card, this the card, the small card. Like the you know the man he comes on a day of judgment, and uh, he will see you know take into account with Allah subhanahu wa taala, and he'll say like I know I did too much, please just you know don't embarrass me, I don't need to hear it. And Allah says no, I need to be just, you know I have to tell you, and then he says you know please, and then Allah brings all his like books and books and books and books of the sins that he's done throughout his life, right? And then the man thought like, khalas, I'm finished, like there's no way I can go to paradise. And then Allah said, no, wait, bring out the bataqa. And they brought the bataqa, the small card, and they put it on the scale and outweighed all those books of sins, right? That's because he had such firm ikhlas and belief in that tawheed statement of la ilaha illallah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him and entered him into paradise. So sometimes a person can say a statement so sincerely from his heart, so purely you know, mukhlis that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can even wipe away the kabair with it. You know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arham rahimin, insha adabu insha arham. He is the most merciful. He can punish or he can forgive. You know, so a person might not have a chance to make tawbah correctly, but he's done so many good deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his mercy wipes it away. You know. But <laughs> don't ever depend upon that because you don't know for sure yourself so always make tawbah the Prophet said him the best of the creation he used to make tawbah and istighfar 70 times a day and he is the Nabi so, so the, sin, the rights of the person it's up to that person to forgive you know so if you can get their forgiveness it's better so they don't have to come on the day of judgment and take their rights from you you know so if it will not cause a greater evil. You know, sometimes a person might want to make islah or return the right of a person, but in doing so it might make the person more angry and cause a greater evil. So in that case you have to find an alternative way, like either 
do it through an intermediary or make give sadaqah in the person's name or you know ask make dua for that person for example something like that but if it's a right you know and you know the person will accept it you should go to that person and, and, and ask for forgiveness or return the right that you've taken from him or her you know it's always on the on the safe side or for example if you know that will cause a greater harm like say somebody you spoke badly about a person go and speak good about a person to those people you know something like that but to be on the safe side it's good even like you know sometimes we take it for granted but having enmity is such a sin that sometimes like your dua won't even be accepted like it sits there and waits till you make sulh between you and your brother or you and your sister you know that's how dangerous it is I try to keep the relation and they cut me off I try to be nice to them and they're mean to me I say nice things to them and they curse me. But I, the Prophet I sent him, he said, if you are like you say it, be patient and you will have paradise. So the higher level is to like have sabr al adha you know, and be patient and to keep the relations of the womb and try to be nice. At least something that you know, like a phone call or sending a nice letter or something like that. You don't have to be totally involved. You know, if you know for sure like you're going to get involved, you, you go to them and you're going to be like a fight or cursing or backbiting then you can just you know try, try to avoid the greater of the two evils then yeah you know maybe stay away if that, in that case but it's sometimes you know it's permissible to avoid but sometimes it's better to have patience and if you can do good and make islah like the Prophet said you know the person that goes and just worships is not as good or high level as the person that he's lives in with the people and calls them to Islam and Dawah because that's the job of the Anbiya, the Prophets alayhim salatu salam think of how much they suffered, how much ridicule they have you know, and they know for sure that they are sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they have the Qur'an, they have the light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet alayhi salam and, and, and his own family would ridicule him they would throw stones at him they would say lies about him, they know that it's lies to other people, you know, having your own uncle come and tell people oh, my nephew is a liar, don't listen to him or throw stones, have little kids go throw stones, and you're the messenger of Allah, right? But the Prophet ﷺ, he didn't get angry, he was like patient, and he kept calling people to Islam regardless. So that's the job of the Anbiya, that's the best job. You know, you might be oppressed, you might be ridiculed, you might, some people get, you know, imprisoned and stuff for calling to the truth. But to be patient is always better, and then you, تحتسب أجرك عند الله, you expect the reward from Allah only. You know, we don't want any praise or thanks from you. Our reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you do something with ikhlas and sincerity, and you know, you're doing the right, you'll get rewarded for it. And if they transgress against you, they'll get the sin and they give you more reward. You know? But if you fear you're going to fall into sin, then obviously it's better to stay away. Allah knows best. Barakallahu feekum. Zakumullah khair. Subhanakallah. Bihamdika. Ashadu la ilaha ilaha ilaha. Astaghfirullah. Wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Zakumullah khair.